ancient Rome, capital of the empire, Caput Mundi. And when we think of ancient Rome, we think of temples, we think of the Pantheon, we think of the Roman Forum, we think of the Imperial Fora, the bath complexes, the many aqueduct lines. There's so much happening within the walls. But of course, Rome was connected to its empire through its road system. And the most famous of roads, the queen of roads, was the Via Appia. And it all starts here, right by the Circus Maximus, the largest entertainment venue of the ancient world, where you once had chariot races. The Via Appia is the queen of roads, the Regina Rearum, so wrote Statius in the first century AD. And it is truly the most magnificent road built by the Romans. Ultimately, the road network traversed the empire, 50,000 miles of paved roads. And the Via Appia is so important because it was created in the fourth century by Appius Claudius Caicus, the censor, and the construction of the road emanating from Rome was built into the hinterland, mirroring the conquest of Southern Italy in the midst of the Second Samnite War and extending all the way down with the conquest of the peninsula, culminating in Brindisi in 244 BC. And Brindisi for the Romans was the gateway, was that major port that easily traversed the Mediterranean to get to Greece. So the Via Appia Road became famous for travelers and pilgrims, for the transport of goods across the peninsula, but also the movement of the military. They weren't traditionally departing from Ostia. They would go across the length of the Via Appia. That's 360 kilometers, 329 miles, all the way to Brindisi. We're going to experience that journey today, departing from Rome and the Circus Maximus and the Porta Capena, where the Via Appia started and make our way through Southern Italy, culminating in Brindisi, the gateway to the Greek East. This is truly an epic journey. And as we make our way down the Via Appia, sometimes we have archeological parks. We have just outside of Rome, the Parco Appia, and people can on the weekend walk, jog, walk their dogs, ride a bike. They can experience history. They can be transported back in time. And as we drive through to arrive at spectacular sites and monuments, sometimes the archeological parks, like in Terracina, like in Minturnae, like in Ignazia. And other times, the Via Appia is part of the urban fabric of thriving cities today, like Brindisi and Bari and Taranto. Still other times, there are difficulties at arriving at sites, at lone arches, bridges, seemingly in the middle of nowhere in fields. So it's going to be an adventure. It's going to be a great way to connect to this incredible storied road. This was a road that was created out of the desire for conquest conquering the southern half of the peninsula of Italy, the Romans were successful. And then it's really that super highway. And what we see lined along so much of it will be changing stations, way stations, places to get a fresh horse or carriage, the mutationes, a place to rest at night, a lodging, a mansiones. We also have the Via Appia, like so many roads leading to Rome, are lined with tombs. And the Via Appia is really special because we don't just have the modest tombs, the Columbarian tombs, but we also have grand tombs of the who's who of ancient Rome. Senators, equestrians, emperors. And of course, the best tomb that we'll see is that of a woman, Cicilia Metella, that dominates the landscape. So there's going to be so much that we can experience down the road of the Via Appia. So there are 
other roads that were created before the Via Appia, of course, but they were for a purpose, like the Via Salaria, the salt road going down to the salt pans at Ostia. There were roads that were designating destinations, the Via Latina, the Via Praenestina, the Via Ardia, but this one was named after a person, the censor, Appius Claudius Caicus in 312 BC. And that also underlines the fact that we're getting the rise of the individual that will culminate with the strongmen generals, Marius, Sulla, Pompey, ultimately Julius Caesar, and then the emperors. But at this time, this standout figure is this statesman who said, we need a new road going into the land that they're fighting for in the Second Samnite War. But then also, Appius is going to build the first aqueduct in Rome in 312 BC. So we get the rise of the individual, we get the rise of monumental works, and so much of it in early Rome is about infrastructure. And that's what we get with the Via Appia, still standing in so much of Italy. Thanks for joining us on Ancient Rome Live. You can find a lot more content on our website, ancientromelive.org. And of course, you can also donate so that we can make more fantastic content. We're so excited about ancient Rome and empire and all that has been left behind throughout the Mediterranean. Let us know in the comments what you'd like us to make next.